the entrance antiphon for the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome as we come together this day to celebrate and to share in these sacred mysteries of our faith. And as we now gather before this altar, let us prepare our hearts to receive our Lord as we seek forgiveness, mercy, and peace. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh, and you dwell among us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am object of laughter, everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out, violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. response today, my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts, like the earth parched, lifeless, and without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsty for you, Lord my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. 
Lifting my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied, and the, with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsty for you, I Lord my God. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. It's all just for you, O oh Lord my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Take my yoke upon you, says the Lord, and learn from me, for I, for I am meek and humble of heart. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to the Lord. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, on the th be killed and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. <clears throat> he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. So when I first read this gospel reading, I thought, this reading gives me hope. And of course, you're thinking, what do you mean it gives you hope? Jesus says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. And it isn't so much what he said, at least for me, it's what he didn't say. He didn't say, get behind me, Satan, Andrew. I'm going to build my church on you because your brother doesn't get it. That gives me hope that God understands the human condition. And even at the um, crucifixion and the passion, right, we read about Jesus being tortured, crucified, and dying. And one of the subplots, of course, is Peter, who's saying, I'll never deny you, Lord. And the third time he denies him, the cock crows, and Jesus just looks at Peter. And Jesus doesn't say, all right, Peter, I know there's another disciple around here. Oh, there's John. John, I'm going to build my church on you. The human condition and it gives me hope and an understanding that 
God always has forgiveness and mercy for those that would seek forgiveness, ask forgiveness with a sincere and a contrite heart. And that gives me hope. The second thing that really came to mind as I was uh, reading this gospel reading was last weekend, Jesus said, it was about identity, and Jesus said to, to his disciples, who do people say I am? And of course, right, that's when Peter answers, you're the Lord, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, and then he says, but who do you say I am? And so we were challenged last week to sit down, contemplate, who is Jesus in our life? And so the gospel reading last week was all about identity. As I was sitting at home on our couch, kind of contemplating the gospel reading, we had uh, our granddaughters were over, and our three-year-old, Bailey, was looking through a book that we have on our coffee table And it's a small pamphlet, and it's about the rosary. And it has all of the mysteries in there, and it has the pictures of the mysteries. And so she's opening the book, and my wife had gone through that with her a number of times, and she's talking out loud, but to no one in particular. And she sees baby Jesus, you know, being born in Bethlehem, and she sees the Blessed Mother in heaven, and she's talking about, and here's what happened, and she's just going on and on. And then she opens the book to a picture of the crucifixion. And she looks at the picture and she's a little bit perplexed, as only a three-year-old can be. And she comes to me. And I don't know what's going to happen from that point on. And she shows me the picture and she says, pop, pop. And with all the innocence of a three-year-old, she just says, look, Jesus is naked. And it was at that point that I understood that this gospel today is also about identity. Last week, Jesus asked the disciples, asks us, who do you say I am? But in the gospel reading today, Jesus is saying, you know, you're right, but here is who else that I am. I am the man who is going to give his life, who is going to be mocked, humiliated, tortured, scourged, made to carry his cross, and he would be killed on the cross with crucifixion in the way that only slaves and rebels were killed during that time. And of course, the challenging thing, right, is that Jesus also says, and oh, by the way, if you're going to follow me, you also have to take up your cross. Now, to this point, right, the apostles are really happy with the way things have gone. There are miracles, 5,000 people are fed, they've seen raising from the dead, they've seen blind men seeing, crippled are walking, people love the teaching of Jesus, everybody's in a great mood, and Jesus is saying to them, do as I do, and now he throws the monkey wrench in and says, and oh, by the way, this is what I'm doing as well, and you have to, if you're going to be a follower of mine, you have to be willing to give your life unconditionally in love for your fellow man if asked to. And of course, Peter's saying, no, that's not going to happen. Don't worry about it. You're the Christ. One of the challenges I think that we have as Catholics is that we would rather say, I'm worshiping the resurrected, risen, ascended Lord. It's clean, it's glorious, 
It's a, it's a miracle, but it's also sanitized. It's not the resurrected, ascended Lord that saved us from our sins. It's the crucified Lord. And that's why, as Catholic Christians, in our sanctuary, we'll have a cross with the body of Christ on it as the constant reminder that it was his death that freed us from our sins and gives us all the opportunity to be with him in heaven, to follow him. There's a cathedral in London. I haven't been there, but I've read about it, and it's it's the Cathedral of St. Paul. And down in the crypt, there's a crucifix, and there's actually a bronze, a bronze body on the crucifix. And there are words above the crucified Jesus, and they're in Latin. And no, it doesn't say the King of the Jews. It says taken, not taking, taken away are the sins of the world. Taken away are the sins of the world. That's what our faith is all about. It's the reminder that Jesus died for us and gave us that opportunity to be with him in glory. It's the reminder that at every Mass during the consecration, we are in communion with the Last Supper, and the crucifixion of Christ as the wine is changed into the blood, the sacrifice that Jesus made, and the bread is turned into his body. So here's the challenge. Last week, Father Matt said, you know, When you go home after you have brunch, cup of coffee, you know, you're sitting on your front porch or on your deck, hold the crucifix in your hand and look at it and say, you know, who, Jesus, are you to me? Easy enough to do, right? it's, It's not offensive. I don't know that it's really challenging either, but I'd like to now challenge you the same way by asking you to do this. You go home today, have your coffee, have brunch, sit outside, hold the crucifix, and say, what cross or crosses have I not been willing to take up at this point in my life? What cross, what crosses have I not taken up that I should take up that I haven't? Am I doing my part to feed the hungry, house the homeless, clothe those who need help, sharing my treasure? How about even in our own home lives? Have we taken the step to reconcile with maybe one of our relatives that have been estranged for years? someone who may have asked forgiveness with a sincere, contrad heart, and we refuse forgiveness. I know when I sit there and I look at the crucifix and I wonder what cross haven't I taken up, there's always at least one thing that comes to mind. Unfortunately, there are probably more than four or five. And so I ask you to to look at the crucifix, look at your life, decide what cross you haven't taken up, and just pick one and take the cross up. Now's the time. It's easy to follow Christ in all his glory when things are easy. But he asks us to follow him in everything he did, including taking up his cross 
and dying for us because he had unconditional love. Please stand. Together, let us now profess our faith as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's love for us, let us now lift up our prayers for our needs and the needs of the world. For the church, that the fire of the Holy Spirit will embolden us to give witness to God and to courageously follow the examples of Jesus, we pray for the grace to follow Christ, that we may embrace the cross as we experience opposition, hardship, or rejection, and allow God to raise us to new life, we pray. For wisdom, that the Spirit will unshackle us from the contemporary priorities of power and wealth and renew us to live virtuously and generously, we pray for the gift of discernment, that the Spirit will guide us in our judgments and actions so that the gospel can be manifest in our lifestyles, families, and professions, we pray. For all who live amidst civil discord and conflict, that God will break the cycle of violence, heal the divisions that exist within the civic community, and protect the innocent, we pray. For new spirit and leadership, that God will call women and men to leadership in the church, education, and government, and gift them with critical insights and the ability to place the needs of the most vulnerable above their own, we pray. For all the living and those for whom we mourn, especially Jerry Statz, that they are forever in the warmth of the light of Christ, we pray. And for the prayers written in our book of intercessions and those in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, to you we lift our prayers, and if it is your will, we ask you to answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the communion antiphon. How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you.
Let us now together say our prayer with St. Joseph, and as we do so, let us ask St. Joseph to intercede for us to bring an end to the corona pandemic and the evil that is behind it. Good St. Joseph, as you led the Holy Family, watch over our families. Help our family and all families to know and share God's love. In our family relationships, may we find healing and seek to be holy. May our fathers help us to become faithful disciples of Jesus who share our love for him. As foster father of Jesus, watch over all who serve as spiritual fathers. In a special way, bless our Holy Father, our bishop, and our priests. May they follow your humble example in their fatherly care for the people of God, the Church. With Mary, you raise Jesus, the high priest. You know our need for priests. Please raise up good and holy priests from our families to serve the people of our diocese. May our children and grandchildren hear and say yes to the call of Jesus, just as you and Mary did. Good Saint Joseph, pray for us. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.